Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. We are here for episode 2 of our Formula 1 23 My Team Career Mode. We are finally back after that bug in the game that didn't allow me to access the My Team save after the first race because of my F2 driver career mode save. Uh, it's finally been patched so I can now get back to the F123 my team career mode and just to let you guys know that this video and the next one will be my team videos just so I can catch up uh, and make sure I'm you know making an equal amount of videos per series but we are getting ramped up here uh, as we head into Jetta we got a few upgrades coming in some of them failed such as the roll dampers here we got to get those reset and hopefully those will be ready for the Monaco Grand Prix which would be after this one but we are heading straight in to qualifying here as most of you know at this point my Jetta pace is pretty good and we now have the difficulty up to 105 so we're gonna get a little test here of how the pace will be uh, versus AI that are a little bit more difficult I'm hoping that with this uh, difficulty adjustment will kind of be you know scratching for points maybe you know averaging around p10 to p7 uh, depending on the track and all that so we'll see here in a Jetta how that goes if anything we can always change it later on in the season but we are on our very first flyer here and we're looking pretty good so far uh, we got Carlos Sainz putting up the fastest slot with a 127.9 we have two green sectors we're not able to purple anything uh, just yet the car is definitely not there to be contending for pole but we put up a 128.5 which is a little bit slower than Carlos Sainz's lap and a lot slower than Max Verstappen or sorry uh, Charles Leclerc's lap and we come in P14 we only put up one flyer there and then into Q2 we put up our first lap on the medium tires as usual just to save an extra set of soft tires for Q3 if we get there uh, this first or I guess second flyer on the soft tires we're already up a tenth through the first sector Duhan is having a pretty good qualifying as well he's up in P10 currently most people have already put up their first laps Bottas down in at P14 but the track is ramping up and we have to up our pace here we're four tenths up uh, by the end of sector one and then going in to sector three we are up by six tenths of a second so hopefully this will be enough to get us in to q3 otherwise we might have a little bit of an issue uh, we'd be starting in p13 by the looks of it but we're going to activate the drs here we're going to cross the line and we are going to squeeze in to q3 here with a p6 which is a too bad one lap pace is pretty great on this car we don't have to worry about tire wear or anything we're just giving it all that we have uh, jack duhan though does not make it into q3 he loses out it's coming in p11 not bad though for a rookie okay, driver yeah, rookie f2 driver not one of the my team icons that i've had in the past such as nico hulkenberg last season but we start off q3 here with a little bit of a fuel system fault in the car which is going to put us out for four minutes here which is pretty crucial and that means that we're probably only going to have time here to put up one flying lap so our first one is the one that is probably going to count here we're going to see if we can squeeze another lap in uh, by the end of this one and i think going to this race we might have a little bit of an engine issue that might be lingering a little bit as we have the orange um, little symbol there in the bottom right indicating that there might be something wrong with our power unit but for now uh, everything is all good i hope there's not another failure in Jetta as there was in season four of the F122 my team series because I always love racing Jetta and because it's only on the calendar once per season uh, it takes a while for me to get back to Jetta and I don't really play F1 outside of the my team and the driver career mode so I'm hoping that there is no DNS we got a green sector one again we're not purpling anything we are trying to get in front of Esteban Ocon and Fernando Alonso, maybe even Pierre Gasly as well, in the Alpine, who thus far having a, I guess, okay season. There's only been one race so far. Alonso not really having the greatest season right now. I guess compared to real life, you would think that the Aston Martins would be up there in P1 and P2 to at least start the season. But we got the DRS, and we are going to cross the line here at the end of Q3. 
and we are gonna be in P7. We're not gonna have enough time to put up a second flyer. We try to dive into the pits, but by the time we get all settled in and stuff, there's only like a minute left. So we're keeping an eye on Esteban Ocon, Pierre Gasly, and Fernando Alonso to see if they can pass us on their final flyers. But it is not enough. We're going to be starting in P7 in this race, which is uh, pretty good for the 105 difficulty. The question is, though, can we keep our tires uh, nice and, you know, rubbered in and all the way to the end of this race? But let's get right into it. Let's see what we can do here in Jeddah. Hopefully we can keep this P7, if not move up a spot or two, secure some points for the team. And hopefully Duhan can bounce back because he had that DNF last time out in Bahrain. So he's going to have another chance here to finish. And he's starting in P12. So hopefully he is able to maybe squeeze it to the points. That'd be great for the team and it would be great for his confidence. Okay, how was that pull away? You can have a bit more grip on that on the start. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are here for the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. Um, our qualifying kind of went sour at the end there. We didn't have a chance to put up a final flyer, but our first lap is still obviously good enough for P7, which is kind of what I was aiming for with that 105 difficulty. Maybe we could have squeezed into P6. I don't think we were too far behind Lewis Hamilton. But this is also just going to be a true test of our fastest possible pace, I would say, on this 105 difficulty because uh, Jetta's the circuit I am the fastest at out of any, I would have to say. I also uh, make sure that my mic is plugged in this time because as you guys saw in the last video, uh, if you guys haven't seen that, be sure to hit the link up top, driver career mode. Uh, I forgot to plug in my mic, so I have to do a little bit of post-commentary. Still waiting on the results of that video. Maybe I'll do some more post-commentary, but for now, we're sticking with the live commentary. I'm hoping here that we can jump Hamilton, maybe Sergio Perez as well, and then just park the bus on him and secure a P5. That would be great in this race. Uh, we have yet to have a red flag. Um, I think we have a safety car in Bahrain. That was a little bit of a while ago because I couldn't record it due to the bug that was still in the game. It has now been patched. Duhan is starting down in P11 or P12. Uh, he did not make it into the top three after a strong Q1. But I'm pretty happy with this pace thus far this season. Uh, I would say for his skill level, definitely better than the other two drivers that I had um, in the previous My Team Career Mode series. But let's get on the grid here. Let's see what we could do here in Jetta. Uh, there's not enough room to maneuver our way around, but we're going to see what we could do here as we got five red lights and we are underway here in Jetta. And we got a pretty good start. We overtake Hamilton. We're wheel to wheel with Sergio Perez we got a break a little early though and there's contact between Carlos Sainz and Sergio Perez I think I saw a piece of debris there flying around so Sergio Perez might have to dive into the pits here but we are up in the P5 already and now we just got to work on holding it we're already falling behind to the front of the grid here we also just have to watch our tire wear in this race because one thing I've noticed about this new game is that the tire model seems a little different. The tires wear out a lot quicker, and you're genuinely concerned towards the end of your stint about your tires. As Sergio Perez dives into the pits, he's getting a new front wing after that collision with Carlos Sainz. But let's put our head down here, try and get a few good laps in, see if maybe we can uh, catch up to the front of the pack there. They're 2.3 seconds ahead, 2.4 now. Oh, we got a yellow flag down at turn 13 but uh racing resumes i'm still waiting for a red flag scenario i'm interested to see how that works nico halkenberg out of the session in the haas uh looks like it is a terminal damage failure because he's just stopped there in the middle of the track surprisingly no safety car though he's just parked there pretty unsafe Hamilton also, he is going to have DRS starting this lap, and I don't know if we're going to be able to hold him off here, as he's going to maybe try and come down the inside. Nope. Okay, we're still good. 
And now he's right on our rear. Okay, now we got a little bit of an issue. We only got 55% battery. Maybe our race is not with Lewis Hamilton. Uh, rather, it might be with Fernando Alonso. Lewis Hamilton coming down. The inside turn one here. We're going to be going wheel to wheel. Trying to beat him to the next apex. Staying inside the track limits, but it's not enough. We got a little bit of wheel spin on the exit. And uh, Lewis Hamilton overtakes us to uh, take P5 here after Sergio Perez dives into the pits. We're all over the place at the moment. We got Fernando Alonso right up our rear as well. So a little through a battle for P5. Starting here, we broke way too early. But we're still right behind Lewis Hamilton. We are gaining on him with the help of that DRS. We just got to stick with them now. Sector 1 is going to be very important for sticking with them. And we got to watch our tires too because I want them to uh, last us until the end of the stint. So we might lose a little bit of time. But as long as we can stay in DRS range, I think it'll be okay. We'll just get Hamilton to tow us around a little bit. Avoid the overtake from Fernando Alonso. But we've now fallen out of DRS range. And Alonso might have a go at us. Pierre Gadsley in the outpeed also back there. Alonso going around the outside here. We just got to keep up with them. Actually, you know what? Let him take DRS. And then we will use that to take that spot back. And give us a little bit of a boost. Try and get closer to Hamilton. But Alonso has a faster car. We're three wide now. Going down the main straight. But with the help of that DRS. We're able to keep that lead. And now we're going three wide into turn one. I don't really know where to go here. I think we have contact with Fernando Alonso. And we have a lot of wheel spin. There's like five of us now. I'm holding up this pack. Alonso trying to go around the outside here. Oh my goodness. We are squeezing so tightly through sector one here. And we're just able to keep the position. I think someone, I can't look right now. Alonzo, he's right on our right rear, but he's got to fall behind. Otherwise, there's going to be a lot of contact. He's probably going to end up in the wall. And he actually drops down quite a bit because of that. Uh, but I don't think he's slow enough to actually stay that far behind. He will end up catching up to us once again. Our tires are starting to go here a little bit too. we got to have these tires on for the next six laps, I believe. So maybe a little bit of tire manager. We gotta work on the car, get the tire wear uh, down, so that we can have these longer stints without being so uncomfortable about the drivers behind us. Oh! Oh, never mind. I thought that was a red flag. We're pitting this lap. I don't know why it's red. I thought there was a red flag out. I just saw a little bit of uh, the grid flipping around up front. I think McLaren and Hamilton were kind of duking it out. And then that red thing came up, but we are pitting this lap. We're going to get onto a nice, refreshing set of hard tires. These tires are so gone. Uh, I'm, like, just managing these tires to the very end. Got to be very, very careful. We're definitely losing time here. It's Pierre Gasly now. Uh, overtakes Lando. Duhon with a great drive. He's in P8. Uh, Sergio Perez obviously lost out at the start of that race with that collision with Carlos Sainz. So everyone's kind of moved up a spot from uh, P5 onwards. But Duhon would still be in the points, which would be great for the team uh, if he can finish in the points here. There's still a whole stint left in this race, but if he can hold that, that would be absolutely fantastic. And we're definitely not getting any sort of fast slots or anything. We're not that quick. We're not that guy right now. <laughs> Uh, but we are putting up a pretty good race. We're holding this P6, starting with P7. We moved up one spot from the start of this race. And by the looks of it, I don't think we're going to have any more action. Unless there's a safety car or a red flag in the back half of this race. It seems like most people are pitting now. So let's get into the pits here. And uh, put on this fresh set of hard tires and see who else hops into the pits here. Gasly staying out, maybe trying to go for a little bit of an undercut. There's actually a few drivers staying out here. So maybe just a little bit of a different strategy or lend their teammates pit first. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. Beautiful pit stop, 2.4 seconds. And we're on a nice, fresh set of hard tires. And they feel fantastic. So let's uh, put our head down here, get some more good laps in. And uh, get these tires set in. We gotta hold them for another 15-ish laps. Well, we got three laps left of racing here. 
and we have just about caught up to Stroll and Lando who have decided to stay on the medium tires. I don't know what tire they started on. They might have started on the hards or something. But they're on the medium tires now and that degradation is starting to show as we are able to uh, catch up to them. We're still not in DRS range yet, but we should be in the next lap or so. We just need them to keep fighting because that is what is losing them all that time and allowing me to catch up here. We're about four or five seconds behind, but now we are 1.3 seconds behind and Stroll still in DRS range of Orlando. Can he catch up? Can I catch up and try and steal a P6? from Lando and Lance Stroll. Uh, we were in P6 the entirety of that race, but I guess their strategy kind of helped them out, and they jump up to P6 and 7, and we suffer because of that. We're now in P8. Godsley has been steadily following us. He hasn't really made too much ground. He was at the start, but I kind of kept him at bay up to this point here. And we're actually losing out now. I don't have any battery, but look at the battling up there going all the way down into the final turn and uh, Lando still ahead of Lance Stroll. Let's see, did we gain any time there? Okay, turn one is where we're going to gain a lot of time because Lance Stroll is going to have DRS. Hopefully he can go for a move. He's going side by side with Lando Norris down into turn one. Is there going to be a collision or does Lando get overtaken cleanly? And uh, not enough wheel bumping for me to gain a lot of time. You got two laps now left to try and catch up. Okay, we're gonna try and get into DRS range here. We need to get into DRS range within this next lap or so to try and get past them. Try and get the move done. Secure some extra points for Cyborg Racing. And we are just about inside that DRS range. We'll use our last little bit of battery here. See if we can just squeeze in there. Oh, Lando, I think, might have made contact with the wall there as he's trying to go for the move on Lance Stroll. And he is kissing his rear diffuser. And we are still outside, so maybe the last line. Oh, no, we made it to DRS Surge. Okay, let's go. Okay, this is going to help us here. Let's see if we can uh, get a little bit closer. We're going to be suffering from that dirty air, and the tires are pretty much gone at this point. Lando Doris overtakes Lance Stroll once again. And we are now within range. We are now in striking distance of one of them, whoever decides to uh, be in front of me when that DRS zone comes down the back straight. But he will also have DRS. It's going to be a little tricky, but we are sticking tight with Lance Stroll, with Lando Norris. Let's see here, we got one DRS zone coming up. Lance Stroll, or not Lance Stroll, Lando Norris might be a sitting duck here. There might be a double overtake for him incoming. As I am on the attack, Lance Stroll obviously as well on the attack in that Aston Martin. I think he's doing a little bit better than his teammate, and I didn't even see Sergio Perez out of nowhere. Where the heck did he come from? I didn't even realize I've been so focused on the drivers in front. We now drop down at the P9, no! And he's going to have DRS here. Oh my god, I think I just screwed it. I screwed it. I wasn't paying attention. And me and Sergio Perez battling once again here in Jetta, and we're not going to be quick enough. As Sergio Perez uh, is making a move on Lando, we now have Pierre Gasly right behind me. I don't know what the heck is going on with our car at the moment. We just slowed down to a halt pretty much, and that ICE is at 84%. So we gotta hold off uh, Pierre Gasly, and it went from potentially getting into a P6 position to now fighting to stay uh, in P9. Pure Godsley trying to get one extra point for himself. We got 6% battery left and it's not going to be enough. We're going to lose it on the last lap. No! How are we so slow? I think our engine is just gone at this point because we were going 308. Down the back straight there, that ICE just taking massive wear this race. And we only secure one point. No! Oh my gosh. And that's the end of the race. We'll I think we we're just early. limited by the car there, man. Our tire wear is way too high. The engine deg is awful. 84%. This is the second race of the season. How are we at 84%? I don't understand.
what I'm thinking actually happened now is they might have taken my suggestion from last season or maybe buffed it a little more because I always said how in 10 race seasons you never really had to replace engine components. They would just last you until the end of the season. You maybe have to replace it once or twice if you had a failure. But this time around, I'm thinking about it with two races uh, out of 10 out of the way for this season. We are... 20% through this season and we got four engines so we just have to make them last and we're gonna have to invest in the durability in order to get the power units to the end of the season and if it wasn't that then it was I don't know maybe some sort of issue with that engine and the degradation just shot up massively but Carlos Sainz wins the race uh, after having that incident with Sergio Perez who storms through the grid he should have gotten driver of the day because uh, he had to pit on the opening lap and he stormed his way back and took over three positions, four positions maybe, with like three or four laps left to go. We get a P10, so that's only one point. And then uh, Jack Duhon does not have the greatest race either. He drops down to P18 after starting P11, so maybe he had a similar issue that we had with our uh, engine deg and he just lost a lot of pace towards the end of that race because he had the same strategy as me he didn't get into any incidents there's only the two mechanical failures with Nico Hulkenberg and Esteban Ocon there should have been that incident recorded with Sergio Perez but uh, that's whatever so we now drop down to p6 in this driver's championship we got overtaken by George Russell Charles Leclerc um, I'm not sure who else was in front of us before this race but we're down into p6 which isn't too too bad hopefully uh we can up our pace just a little bit but i'm liking where we're at in terms of difficulty i think monaco and some of the other races this season will be a bit of a challenge to possibly get into the points uh, if we're struggling to get into the points here then you know the next few races might be tough so yeah, we did have an issue. So the engine fault that happened in the last session was caused by an issue with our chassis. Uh, we should consider investing more, blah, blah, blah. But I guess that's the issue that caused our engine wear to jump up to 84%. We lost the pace in the car and we're definitely going to have to replace that one because the, the first one is uh, toast. So maybe they didn't take my recommendation uh, of, you know, boosting the engine wear. But we'll see as the season progresses. We also got enough points for some upgrades here. Power unit, surprisingly, uh, is doing pretty well. It is the most developed component out of the rest simply because uh, we do have that Red Bull powertrain in there. But I think this time around we're going to invest a little bit in the uh ICE here improve material so that will improve our durability and then after that maybe a chassis upgrade or should I go for an aerodynamics upgrade okay so seven to four for the aerodynamic or for the chassis so let's get an aerodynamics upgrade here uh what's the recommend okay so this is the recommended upgrade anyway so let's get this front wing flat profile that should be ready before Monaco and then we got 740 left over so do we have enough for anything else gearbox improved materials why not get another durability upgrade they'll put us in front of red bull how's red bull's durability so bad they're winning all these races well they've only won one race but i mean in real life as well if one two finish i don't know how they're doing that well maybe later on in the season they will start running into some reliability issues but we have big bad monaco up next making a triumphant return uh in the next video so hopefully we got no rain oh we got a failed upgrade too give me one second here uh, we don't even have enough points we're short by like 40 points come on <laughs> why are all the upgrades failing oh my gosh okay well that is awful both of our durability upgrades fail i don't even think we have enough points to uh Get those restarted okay so we'll get one and then we won't have enough for the other upgrade for now so we're gonna have to hold off on that we had a major what is going on why are all the upgrades failing oh my gosh what is this i think every upgrade we put into the car after this race has failed on us 
so all the departments are kind of just sleeping right now and we gotta waste all these R&D points just getting these upgrades I guess rebooted once again so there we go another 625 R&D points down the drain with all the parts we had to redo I feel like we probably could have gotten another upgrade or two but as I was saying once again we have big bad body go up next hopefully there is no rain uh, that would be ideal and then from there I think I can get us in a good spot because all we really have to do there is qualify well and then park the bus after that but that is going to be it for this one guys as always if you've watched up to this point be sure to drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you're excited for Monaco also hit the notification bell so you guys know when that video comes out uh, but thank you guys for watching and I will catch you in the next one have a great night guys